Hey there everyone, this is Alex and I'm coming at you with a new computer craft tutorial. I know it's been a few years, but I was browsing my YouTube analytics and couldn't help but notice that these videos were just the most well received and most viewed videos I had. So, you know what, I'll just give you what you want. And yeah, today I'm going to show you how to make a keycard door. I think these are more convenient, more secure than your regular old password door and uh, I'll show you how it works. You put in the wrong card, it just spits it out, nothing happens. Put in the right one, and there you go. Door opens and closes, it's very simple. I say it's more secure because unlike the password ones where you type it in the computer, you don't have a computer that's accessible. So some random person can't just go to your computer and terminate it and then let themselves in or see your password, you know? So it's very important that when you make this, you have the disk drive available, but you hide your computer behind it or something. Um, this is a fresh, fresh door with no program on it. Without further ado, let's get into coding. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna edit, go ahead and call it whatever. I'm gonna call it whatever. You can call it whatever you want. Um, I'm gonna establish a variable here for the password, I suggest you have it as a string, aka it should be in between quotations, even if it's a number. If you desire using a number over a string, I'll show you, there's an additional step you'll need to do or it will not work. So I'll show you that when the time comes. So once you got that, we need to specify what side the disk drive is on because we will be referencing it a lot so it'll just save us time and I'm just gonna call it side and it's on the back for me go ahead and set it to whatever side it is for you it might not be the same now I'm just gonna check and see if there is anything in the disk drive if anything's put in there then we'll move on otherwise it's just gonna sit there and wait so I'm gonna do that with a while loop while not disk dot is present Make sure you have the capital P, it's very important. Specify the side. Do. Now, I could just do it like this, just leave it be, but it won't stay running forever. Eventually it will give an error because it's waited too long without anything happening. So in order to appease the computer craft gods, we need to put sleep zero. I don't know why, that's just how it's made. So with that, it'll stay waiting until a key card is put in. Now, this isn't required, but I think it's just an extra layer of security. Um, I'm gonna check the name of the disk or the label that is put in. So name equals disk.getLabel. Specify the side. Now, I am calling mine key card. You can call it whatever you wish, but I'm gonna test if name is not equal to key card then we will go ahead and eject the disk and reboot the computer so we'll go ahead and run it oops if I throw this in there it'll just eject the disk oh actually you know what since we're rebooting it we should go ahead and edit the startup and tell it to run the program immediately. That's what we want it to do. So go ahead and type whatever it's called. Now I can reboot it and there you go. It's, it's stuck, it's waiting for something to be put in there. So if we put that in there, it'll come out and it'll reboot as you can see. If we put a card that has the right label in, notice that it does not spit it out. That is because we have uh, we have broken out of this while true loop and also we have not ran through this block here so we never got to the reboot which is perfect because that means that's that's when we move on to the next step which is authorization so I'm gonna do that with a function function auth I'm gonna call the function down here at the bottom because that's where the program leaves off at the end and you want to make sure you have that before it's referenced. So I just put it at the top. 
Now this part is not required either. However, I think it's necessary because without it, you could run into potential errors. And what I'm gonna do is check simply if the file system, the which is FS, if the path on the disk exists. Now, I'm using a .dat extension. That's just personal preference. You can do .text if you wish, but I just do .dat for anything that is holding sensitive data or something that you don't want people to see. That's just my own preference. Um, feel free to do as you wish. But I'm gonna check and see if this exists. And if it does exist, then we will read what's on the disk and save it to a variable. Now, if, the reason why we're doing this is because some person can run along and put in a key card if it just so happens to match the label and they do not have this correct file path, then you'll get a, an error in your program because you're comparing something that does not exist. And you don't want that in a door that is meant to be running all the time. Because then when you go to use it, it won't be ready. <laughs> you don't want that. So it's a pretty easy solution. Now we're going to open the file using a handler. I'm going to call it a file. The handler is just a, a fancy variable when you're working with file systems. I'm going to open the same path that we specified at the top, code.dat. And we also have to specify what mode, and it'll be an R mode. R stands for read. We are opening it to read information. There's three different modes, R, W, and A. W is for write, and A is for append. Since we're not writing anything to it, we're only reading, that's why we're doing R. You can only open it in one mode at a time, by the way. So just little little heads up. Uh, we need another variable, I'm gonna call it code, to read what is on that file. So file.readall. Notice I have a capital A, it's important that you have that. And then we gotta close it when we're done. So if you have, notice that this is appearing here and here. Um, you, if you have this as anything else, then this will be anything else too, and so on. Just showing you what the file handler is for, and that's, that's it. So after that, we, uh, we officially have read everything we need off of the file. Now we just gotta make sure it matches this password here. So let's go ahead and uh, let's make our disk, our key card. Go ahead and take any old floppy disk and shove it in your disk drive. I'm gonna set the label to key card. And now I'm gonna go ahead and put the password on the card. So we need to open disk slash code dot dat. Put in the password. Make sure it's not in quotations, uh, just because you don't need it to be in quotations. And then uh, I'll just leave it in there because we can go ahead and test and see if it works by uh, printing out code. And there you go. If you see the one, two, three, four, five right there and it's ready to go to the next step, meaning it's not stuck in a loop or anything like that, then you know it's working. So confirming that it works, let's go ahead and continue. I'm gonna take this out. So we only have one more step, and that is to compare uh, code with password. So I'm gonna do an if then statement. If code is equal to password, then we will eject the disk, give it back to the user, and we will open the door Uh, redstone.set output, you want to specify the side that the redstone is on. Uh, I'm going to sleep for three seconds just to leave the door open for that long. And then we will close it. Um, if it does not, if it does not match, then we will just go ahead and eject the disk. And that's it. At the end of this function, Make sure you put a, a reboot just so that it's, again, ready when you need it to be. And 
that's that's pretty much it this program is done so let's go ahead and make sure it all works if I put in this card this dummy card it does not work if I put in the one we just made there we go voila I don't know why but it shoots it real aggressively to the side so it helps to be right up next to it now I mentioned earlier that you should have this as a string and I will show you why if you have this as a number which you might who knows I don't know your agenda uh, it will not work because it will no longer be the same so a string and a number even if they look identical is not the same as you can see so an easy solution to that if you choose to use a number uh, would be to edit this line here the file dot read all when you do this it is stored as a string just by default so we can change it by doing two number surround this by parentheses and that's it now everything that's stored in code will be stored as a number rather than a string so now we'll be comparing two numbers rather than a number and a string so if we reboot it this key card will work now and there you have it I hope this was helpful I hope I did better at explaining it. I know I didn't do such a great job explaining how things worked in the clickable buttons video. So thank you so much for sticking around. If this helped, please like and subscribe. It really helps out. If you have any questions, leave a comment. I do my best to respond to as many as I can. All right, have a good one.